In today's video, I wanted to go over what I think is the best software for Linux that came out of 2022. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meissen and I make videos on beep beep stuff. Now, what may be best for me might not be best for you, but my criteria for these kind of categories is that the software should basically be what I've been using the majority of the time for each category. So for a browser, it should be what I'm using every day for a browser. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the best or the fastest, but what I'm actually using to get stuff done. And that is how I'm gonna categorize each of these criteria going forward. The first category is going to be browser. And for that, it has been Vivaldi. I've been using Vivaldi for the majority of this year. And honestly, it is just about one of the best pieces of software that I've used in several years. It's extremely smooth. It's very fast to use. And it's got so many features in there that putting it in this video will just make it hours long. Uh, I will plan to make a video about Vivaldi in more detail in the future, but just so you know, for this year, Vivaldi has been my browser of choice for many reasons. I'm going to leave a link for Vivaldi in the description below so you can try it out for yourself. I've also made a video on Vivaldi earlier, which talked about how important I think Vivaldi is for Linux. You can go onto the link in the description below for that, or you can click on the link above for going over to that video as well. The second category on this list is productivity. That includes things like email clients, calendars, and so on to help you get your work done. And the winner for this category is also Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi actually includes an email kind of client and calendar and a bunch of other productivity uh, features in it. I actually discovered Vivaldi as a browser because of these features, not the other way around. So it was a very interesting discussion I had with the developers of Vivaldi about that process because it's an unusual route into Vivaldi as a browser. But I actually don't have any email client or calendar on my computer at all. I use Vivaldi for all of those things. Uh, and it has so many features in it that you basically don't need to download extra software for your computer to do these things. Almost everyone out there uses a browser. So if you can save yourself some time by using one program to do several things, you'll find it very productive, which is why it also gets the winning on this list. The third item on this list is video editing. Now for video editing, I basically use DaVinci Resolve. It's very popular for very obvious reasons. It's super, super high grade. It's very easy to use. It has a very, very easy workflow. Now you can actually get this on Linux, Windows, Mac. I do most of my development work on the Mac because it has more RAM than I have on my Linux machine. However, I do use it on Linux as well. It recently also came out for the iPad, uh, for M1 and M2 iPads, which is insane. So I'm looking forward to trying out that. I've learned a lot from one YouTube channel, Mr. Alex Tech, a really good YouTube channel for learning about DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description below because when I switched from Premiere and Final Cut to DaVinci Resolve, I had to find out how to do everything again. Uh, and there's a lot of really great videos on there. So I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description below as well as a link for DaVinci Resolve. The next item on the list is coding and development. Now I was sad once GitHub dropped support for Atom. I had been using that program for a lot of years and then they started developing VS Code. Now VS Code is a great program. However, I don't use the VS Code version. I use VS Codium. Uh, since privacy and telemetry and so on is concerns of mine, I opted to use the VS Codium version of VS Code. It basically is exactly the same except it has the kind of telemetry and the chitty chatty back to Microsoft servers removed. Uh, the GitHub developers have done an absolutely epic job with this software. It's really good. There's a lot of really neat features about VS Codium uh, and VS Code. We can talk about those interchangeably. There's tons of extensions for the program. You can write practically any coding language in it. It's amazing. You can jump in and out of program languages, languages as much as you want to. Uh, the, another benefit is that you can actually use it in the browser by just opening up on any device including an iPhone or an iPad and just hit the full stop uh, icon and it just loads up like a browser version, which is nuts. Uh, and you can also install it on a server, which I've also done. Uh, there's a lot of benefits there. I'm actually going to do a video about installing it on a server. And when I've done that, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for this so you can have a check it out. It's just really great. Um, so definitely recommend it. If you're doing any kind of coding, VS Codium is definitely the way to go with that. And I've been using it a lot in the last year. The next category is going to be Office. 
Now, we can't really escape Microsoft Office. I work for local government also, and Microsoft have their fingers everywhere when it comes to government organizations. That being said, I don't use Microsoft Office at work or at home. What I do use is only Office. There is a pun in there somewhere about it being the only Office for me, but I'm not gonna make it. Basically, only Office is a very refined version of uh, what would be considered FOSS or open source software versions of Office productivity. LibreOffice and so on is okay, but I found that the file compatibility between Word documents and Excel to be a little bit hit or miss. But with only Office, I've been running this for about three or four months now at work and at home. And when I'm exchanging files with my colleagues, I've found that only Office is the most consistent when it comes to sending Excel files, Word files, between me and my colleagues without any problems at all. Uh, the interface, by the way, really nice to use. There's a lot of extra features with it, um, but basically as a Office package, it's absolutely solid. Definitely recommend that. I'm also going to leave a link to the description for that in below so you can check it out. Really good, definitely highly recommended. The next category is going to be cloud suites. Now there's loads of those. There's Apple's, there's Google's, there's Microsoft's, there's a bunch of others. But it's no secret on this channel that I'm a big proponent of privacy and therefore I don't use Google Docs or uh, Microsoft Cloud or anything like that for my own personal stuff. What I do use is Nextcloud. It is really the only option open source based that just has enough refinement and development into it that makes it usable. It's a very polished piece of software. It integrates with things like OnlyOffice really well. Uh, I think you'll like the uh, interoperability between OnlyOffice and Nextcloud. It runs on basically every platform. It's really a no-brainer. If you can self-host Nextcloud, you really should be doing that already. So that's why I'm using that for my cloud suite. The next category is going to be a MISC utility, something that I use either every day or by daily, something on a frequent enough basis that I feel like, wow, I really couldn't get by without this program. And that program is KDE Connect. KDE Connect is a really lightweight little program that runs on basically all platforms, um, but I use it mainly to interface my Linux machine with my iPhone. Sometimes can't be difficult because iOS and those platforms are quite controlled and quite walled off. Linux is like the exact opposite. However, KDE Connect has made a really good little program that allows you to send clipboard, copy and paste, push files back and forward. It's really great. You can send notifications of your phone back and forward. It's a really good little program. It's available on the App Store and in Test Flight, so you can try out the latest versions. I personally use the Test Flight version because when I started using it, that's what I had at first and the App Store version wasn't available. But since availability, it's just skyrocketed. The reviews are really good for it. Really looking forward to seeing how the development goes on that program. If you have an iPhone and you also have a Linux machine, you absolutely must use KDE Connect. It is a no brainer, 10 out of 10. Definitely go ahead and try it out. If you're into any kind of photo and graphic editing, there's really not that many options out there to choose from. There's a bunch of open source stuff you can choose from. Adobe are the kind of kings uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I honestly hate the business model of Adobe. I don't like subscription software. And so looking for open source versions of actually quality, uh, photo editing and video editing and so on can be quite difficult. But on Linux, there is Critter. Critter is a really good program. I definitely don't think it's there yet. However, I have removed Adobe from my kind of entire productivity lineup and I'm using Critter when I need to do graphics. Now, it may not have all the features of Photoshop or Illustrator, but I don't really care because I've removed those programs from my entire productivity setup and I'm still getting my work done which is what I use my computer for. And I'm using Critter for when I need to do any graphics work. It works, I get the files done, I export them, I can do the thing I need to do after. So for that purpose, it serves exactly what it needs to. I've seen the development of Critter grow over the last few years, but definitely it's really getting to a good stage now where I think a lot of people could recommend it. I'm going to recommend it. Uh, definitely go ahead and download that if you're into any kind of graphics and productivity stuff when it comes to photos and so on. Communications category. This is basically going to revolve around Discord. Discord is super popular for a reason. I wouldn't say it's the best, uh, but it definitely functions well as a community platform. However, in the last year, I also use Signal quite a lot and that is available on all kind of platforms. So it's a really good uh, privacy centric program. So I'm using that a lot. Plus I use Slack. So it's hard to really categorize one of these programs as the best or the one that I'm using the most because I'm using all three on a daily basis. If you're a general user, something like Discord is probably gonna work perfectly fine for you. The Linux clients, 
for Discord work really well. I haven't had any problems with mine. Uh, so if you are using Linux and you want to be able to still game and chat with your friends and you have a lot of them on Discord, which most are, uh, you'll find that Discord works perfectly great. I'm still very happy to recommend this as a program on Linux. Uh, however, uh, you could download Signal onto your Linux uh, PC and use that as well. And the Slack client works really good as well. Now, the last uh, category is a kind of honorable mention category. It's one that doesn't really fit into any of the specific categories above, but definitely deserves a mention in this video. And that's H-E-I-C-E-Y. It's a small, tiny little app that it runs on Linux. Now, if you have an iPhone, you will know that when it takes photos, it saves the format into H-E-I-C. Now that format is pretty proprietary. It's pretty locked down and not many programs will open that natively, especially a lot of photo viewers that are default on most systems. However, this little program will take those files and will just convert them into JPEGs and PNGs for you just directly. Now it's a really simple little program uh, and if you're using KDE Connect also to send the photos from your phone to your Linux machine, then I open up this little HEICY program and it just converts everything over and dumps the output into another folder and then I'm able to use those photos in all the different programs I'm using. I hope that you found the list really useful. Um, I'm planning on doing this video once per year so that I can recommend the software that I'm actually using. Like I said, it may not necessarily be the best software. It might not have the most features, but it's the software that I'm using to get stuff done. And I'm very happy to recommend all of those in the list above. Please do like the video if you do like it. And uh, do check all of the uh, links down in the description below for all of the software that was mentioned in this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video.